Hi, everybody. Welcome to GW Center for Integrative Medicine uh, YouTube channel. I'm your co-host, Dr. Kogan, Chief Medical Officer, Associate Professor of Medicine at George Washington University. So um, I have a, a very interesting topic today talking about lithium and Alzheimer's disease. So I'm going to, as usual, go ahead and share the screen and show you why I decided to do this study, uh, this, this presentation. So this uh, study that just came out in Nature, uh, it's a premier journal, actually one of the top uh, journals for biology and medicine. And the research team coming from Harvard, a very solid study looking at lithium deficiency and onset of Alzheimer's disease. Now, I will tell you the study is extremely dense. Uh, it's highly scientific. It has clinical relevance, quite strong relevance, um, but I will not bother you to walk you through the whole study. It's just... If you're interested, I'll, of course, we'll post the link. Uh, it is an open access, so it's very easy to, to get to it and review it. Um, so why are we talking about this topic? Well, um, I have been tracking this whole idea of lithium uh, and in care for, for specifically Alzheimer's disease for quite a long time. In fact, um, probably upwards of about 20% of all my patients with Alzheimer's um, have been on lithium in some form. Now, that's a very low dose lithium. So it's not a new data here. I will tell you in a second what really is critically new about this study. But the idea of lithium uh, as a support or as a part of uh, management of Alzheimer's disease has been gradually growing. How did this all start? Well, many decades ago, there were several large observational studies saying that the countries that have a higher amount of lithium in the water or in earth and thus in vegetables, tend to have a much lower onset of Alzheimer's. Now, of course, this is not a causality, it's an association, so it's you know hard to say, well, does the lithium actually can be used to prevent or even reverse Alzheimer's? Of course, such studies have not been in existence. Um, now, let's just pause for a second and, and talk about what is the lithium? Well, lithium is a um, natural element. It exists in um, earth, it exists in water, we drink it in a micro doses all the time. We eat it with vegetables all the time. It is a metal, it's a transitional metal. And severe lithium deficiency has definitely been associated with a stronger, faster cognitive decline. Uh, so that's been done. Now, what is not has not been clear is what is that relationship? Well, so what actually lithium, how does the lithium participate in the cognitive decline? Well, it turns out that when there is a lithium deficiency, there is an accelerated amyloid beta and tau pathology and increased synaptic and myelin loss, which are kind of a hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. And what this researchers in the nature study did, they did something really, really cool. They basically said, look, um, you know, well, we're, they're bench researchers, right? So this is not a clinical study. They said, but we have a, a animal model. We have a mice model of Alzheimer's disease. So what happens if we give this animals uh, different types of lithium, and they give them low doses. So uh, we would talk about this in a second. So this is not um, micro doses of lithium. This are micro doses. We'll come back to that. And they give them different different salts. They give an organic salts and inorganic salts. They saw that uh, most of the there was some variability in the salts, but salts did get absorbed. They did get in the blood. They did got to the brain. And here's the fascinating thing. The mice that were fed uh, some lithium did a lot better. So they actually have shown significant slower cognitive decline and, and in some situations even reversal. Now that's animal study, right? So, but that's actually first of it. And, and it's specifically showing not just, okay, there's association, but there's actual causation because first they said, yeah, you know, there's a a lithium level so low in patients with Alzheimer's and in animal models if you um, look at it that way but we don't we didn't know if you give the mice lithium what happens so it seems to be promising um, so that's the first now does that mean that we should be using lithium in a clinical practice so that data has not been um, as clear except for two things. So obviously lithium at high dose is used in schizophrenia and, and manic disorders and in bipolar disorder as a mood stabilizer. Now we're talking about hundreds of milligrams and that's a, a lithium with a pretty high toxicity level. You go a little bit off to too much and then you have a serious complications. Here we're talking about low dose organic salts or inorganic salts. So the currently 
we can obtain two forms of lithium. We can obtain lithium aurotate in somewhere between one to 10 milligrams. And that's quite safe. And also there's a new product on the market called Normatim, which is a lithium ascorbate. So it's an ascorbic acid attached to it. And the lithium ascorbate seems to have the highest existing safety. So there hasn't, the studies on lithium ascorbate show absolutely exceptional safety and also much better brain penetration. So the, you don't need as much. So five milligrams of ascorbate will probably be equal to maybe 20 milligrams of orotate. Reality, we don't actually know for sure, but I'm definitely switching to ascorbate for two reasons. So one, um, the studies that were done in ascorbate a bit more convincing in terms of biokinetics. And also, uh, interestingly, it does seem like ascorbate penetration to the brain is better. Orotate absorbs well, but then doesn't get to the brain very well. So there's a, a little bit of that issue. Um, and the carbonate, which is another form of lithium, it's not easy to find. So the, I'm going to go to the, to the normative, to the ascorbate because of that. So let's go back to the actual, well, what all of this means in collectiveness. Well, it probably does mean that we should be start uh, we should be starting to screen more and more patients for def lithium deficiency. Is it easy? Yes. Um, it may not be um, typical insurance-based labs that are assessing this. I don't know if the LabCorp... Well, LabCorp can check the lithium, but they're not checking it for low level. They're checking it for uh, toxicity, so for high level. If you want to look at lithium as a trace mineral, you would want to look inside the cells. You want to look into the blood cells, um, that would be the easiest, red cells or white cells. And such tests do exist. So we do have a capacity to look at the blood level and at the uh, level inside the cells uh, for, for, as a trace mineral. So if serum and or inside the cells is really low, that may be the patients that we would start to give low-dose lithium. I'm also giving lithium to a lot of patients who tell me, look, I have a little bit of uh, emotional instability. And because we do know that both normatim and uh, or the lithium ascorbate and lithium orotate will have some benefit there. So I've been using normatim now for probably about six months, maybe a little bit longer. And what I'm observing, which is actually important, I'm observing that in contrast to orotate, the patients who respond to the ascorbate respond very quickly. So there's no lag period. They tend to get um, a little bit of an emotional balance uh, very quickly. So we're talking about a couple of days versus with orotate, you start, it's hard to see. Most patients wouldn't tell me anything until many months later say, yeah, maybe I feel something, but most people didn't report much. And, you know, because if you want to look into actual Alzheimer's, that's really hard, right? You have to look at the very prolonged period of time. So with, with ascorbate, I'm quite excited because I do think that we may start seeing some quicker effects, which would be, which would mean that in a real clinical practice, I can try to get a gauge to try to gauge whether or not this is going to work for given patients. Now, of course, a lot of this is still awaiting control trials. I do hope that the control trials will be happening over the next you know, few years, but I have no doubt that lithium will end up being part of the treatment for Alzheimer's. Why? Well, the signal is too strong, right? The signal uh, in the the observational study signal is very strong. This 2025, August 2025, nature study clearly saying that at least in animal models is quite an important element. Of course, we're going to start seeing human studies following this given the base preclinical data. So fascinating stuff. Uh, stay tuned. I will, of course, be reviewing um, Upcoming research, if you're going to decide to take lithium ascorbate or lithium orotate for nootropic effects, sure, by all means, go ahead and try. Would, you, would I tell you that you're going to see some immediate cognitive boosting? Probably not. But you will see improved anxiety. You may see somewhat better sleep. You may see just a general less hyper irritability of a nervous system. So you'll feel a bit more resistant to stressors that so definitely could be happening. Now, will in the future it it's also get to the um, point of being used in Alzheimer's disease, we'll have to see. And also, if you decide you want to get tested, uh, please know you're not going to get tested with a regular test. You do need to find a, a provider who will be able to run what's, what's called a functional lithium test, 
which will show you whether you're deficient or not. The regular lab corp request test will not show you that. Uh, of course, you can come to us at Center for Integrated Medicine, uh, or you can find any other practitioners to do that. And I would strongly recommend if you are found to have a deficiency, if your level is very low, that's when you want to take a few milligrams. Uh, and, you know, exact dose is hard to say. If you're going to do orotate, I'd probably stay with five, maybe up to 10. If you're going to use Normatim, if you're going to use Ascorbate, you can even start with one milligram, but I also probably would just go straight to five milligrams simply because the safety is very high. You're not going to overdose at that level. And also there doesn't seem to be any interactions. Uh, I will put the links to the Normatim, to the Nature study. I will also put the link to uh, kind of a re general review of lithium um, on um, at the one of the NIH websites if you're interested in more looking up at the data. And stay tuned. Hope you're doing well. Uh, if you like what you heard today, please subscribe. It helps the channel. Um, and also you will get benefit from getting videos like this early without needing to search for them. Bye-bye. Take care.